Oh, here's one Michelle wrote. Question, what's the worst thing a woman ever told you? You know, it's funny, as soon as I saw this, Michelle, um, I have to say, uh, I literally was flashback to a date I had, I wanna say it was about five years ago. Um, and we were Facebook friends. And so I wasn't really sure we were gonna explore dating or anything, but we went out once and uh, she invited me to be her escort to a uh, charity function. So I went with her and then I asked her out on a date um, some time after that, I, I think it was a month or so after that. And I remember we were sitting at the bar having a drink and I was kind of asking about, you know, seeing each other. And she said to me, Jonathan, I, and, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to tell it to you the way I heard it. I'm not sure these were the exact words, but this is what I heard. Jonathan, you're too fat. I mean, she said, Jonathan, you're too fat. Those weren't her exact words, but that's what I heard. And I mean, I, quite frankly, I was floored. Now, I think she said it in a different way um, because she professed to be athletic and, and, you know, healthy and all that sort of thing. And at that time, I'll be candid with you. I did weigh about 10, 15 pounds more back then. But I'll never forget how that felt to hear the words, you're fat, or at least that's the way my brain interpreted. So that is the worst thing. Uh, well, I'm sure my ex-wife said some really shitty things to me, but that's the worst thing I ever heard on a first date. So, um, so thank you for asking that question. I really appreciate it. All right. Hey, Kit Kat writes in question. If you tell him he's amazing in bed, could that make him think he's a stud? And then he goes off looking for others as he thinks he's super stud. Could that backfire then? Great question. So Kit Kat, do you remember I said, emotionally healthy men love these phrases. Emotionally unhealthy men may use these phrases against you. So yes, there is absolutely a possibility if a man thinks he's great and bad and he doesn't value you that he may go off and try to spread his seed elsewhere. But that means you didn't do a good enough job vetting him to determine if the two of you are a fit. This is why I continually that ladies recommend the book Eight Dates by Drs. John and Julie Gottman. Let me tell you this, guys in it for the short run, they won't put up with this. They'll be overwhelmed. That's too much. Oh my God, I barely know you. Why would you want to do that? Look at, dude, if you want your dick in my vagina, then maybe you might have to jump through a few hurdles to prove to me you're fucking worth it. I'm sorry, ladies. I, I, I know I'm cursing here and I want to apologize. I just want to remind you, I'm your big brother. If I could be there on a first date, I'd have the shotgun ready, pointed at the guy's nose and I'd say, what is your intentions with my sister, my little sister? Because if you do something shitty, I'm going to fuck you over, dude. You know what? Guys back then knew that they actually had to treat women with respect. So if a guy's in it for the short run, he's gone when you talk about the deeper stuff. He's gone. But Jonathan, that's going to scare men away. All the dating coaches tell me never, never, ever do this. Folks, if all the dating coaches were so fucking great, then why is the dating, mating and relating realm so fucking dysfunctional? The book, The Rules, fucked it over for you. And a lot of the dating rhetoric is based on the surface. It's all based on attraction and romance without any understanding of, is this person compatible with me? Do we share the same values? Are our lifestyles actually blendable? And is this person a grown up enough to be in relationship? You know, it's interesting. I was watching a video before I uh, logged on today. And it was about what you should know about divorce. And what it says is the minute you file for divorce, all rationale goes out. Everything you thought was rational about the other person goes out the window. And that is so effing true. Human beings become ridiculously irrational the minute they go through a divorce because then it's all about self. It's all about self. And this is true of men and women alike. It's what can I get from the other person? Isn't that fascinating to think about that? Two people that loved each other and they spent $100,000 on their wedding or even $10,000 on their wedding, whatever they spent, they, you know, you gave, you, we love each other so much. And then the minute you go through the divorce, you hate each other. 
isn't it fascinating? I find it absolutely human behavior fascinates me. I mean, I am addicted to studying human behavior. I'm a junkie for it. And I'm fascinated at dysfunctional behavior, partially because I witness my own dysfunctionality every given day of the week. I am riddled with flaws. I just happen to be aware of them. Most human beings are blind to their flaws. They're unaware. And so going back, Kit Kat, if a man uses that against you, then he's not your guy. But I'm going to tell you, if you said it to me, woohoo! I'm going to want to fuck you more and more and more. So if you really want to make a guy give him goosebumps, the healthy guy, tell him how amazing he is in bed. Kit Kat, thank you so much for that one. I really appreciate it. All right. Jolie says, what can be a bad, what can be bad to ask from a guy? Um, I once had a woman ask me for $10,000 on a first date. <laughs> I think asking a guy for money isn't a good thing. <laughs> mm. Moscow mule time. Um, let me ponder that and I'll get back to you. You know, folks, 